Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number two for the area of study two uh, on basic electrical circuits for VCE one physics. Uh, today we'll be looking at electricity in terms of current and voltage. So last screencast we were talking about charge and fields around charges. What we're going to look at today is what happens when we put that charge in, uh, in a confined space such as uh, the, the wiring of a circuit and have a look um, at that in relation to the energy that it's going to carry. So before we go any further, um, let's define what current is. And current, given the symbol I, is the net flow of movement of charge per second. So it's how many coulombs are moving every second. So the SI unit is the ampere, or something that we would con uh, commonly shorten to amps. So basically what we'd be doing or, or saying is if we could cut the cross section of a wire and count every um, electron that was moving uh, every second, that, that's how we would then determine what the current is. So the equation that we would use is that current is charge over time, or symbolically I equals Q over T. Now we know that charge can be either positive or negative, and given that it could be either positive or negative, the, the direction of flow could be a little bit confusing. So to avoid that, we go by the formal definition of uh, conventional current. And conventional current is the direction that the positive charge would be traveling. Now we can't actually have protons moving, it's the electrons that are flowing. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a funny concept to say it's the direction that the positive's um, flowing. So basically we would say the net flow of positive charge is achieved basically as the opposite direction that the negative charge is moving. So we get a positive, you know, if we could imagine all of the negative charge moving to one end, kind of like charging something with static electricity, um, if we have all of the electrons move from right to left, then the right side becomes positive. So we get that net flow kind of through the reverse process. And, and that conventional current, solving those problems, things like that predominantly are going to be coming up in Unit 3, but we will touch on those a little bit in Unit 1. Now, the way that electricity can be delivered is one of two ways. We've either got AC or DC. AC is a unidirectional current. That means it's flowing in the one direction all the time. This is kind of like uh, what a battery would supply. Or we can have it bidirectional. That means it's alternating current and it is continually changing the direction that it is traveling. So basically, yeah, it, it travels say left to right, then right to left, left to right, right to left. In Australia we use 240 volts and we're on a uh, cycle of 50 hertz or frequency of 50 hertz. That means 50 times per second it has gone to the left and then back to the right. So it's, it's alternating very, very quickly. So in order to cause the current to travel around a circuit, uh, we have to actually give them energy. So to drive the current, we've got to pass on energy. Usually it's a battery or a generator as the uh, source of energy. Um, and we, we refer to these sources of energy as an EMF, or uh, EMF stands for electromotive force. It's kind of a, an inaccurate name because it's a giving energy rather than applying a force to them, but you know, that's that's really neither here nor there for now. So by definition, I suppose we're saying EMF is the potential energy that we give to each charge. So how much energy per unit charge is being applied, that's our EMF. So the SI unit would be volt. Um, it's, it's joules per coulomb, how much energy per coulomb of charge there is, but we have that alternate unit of volts that we can use. Okay, so we've got now a current that can flow. We've got something that's going to provide the energy. 
Uh, those are two of them three minimum things that we need. So we need EMF that's going to provide the energy. We need our electrons. They're going to be in the conductors that are going to complete our circuit. Really important that it completes the circuit. You can have all the conductors there, you can have the battery, um, but if we don't actually form a circuit, then the electrons are not going to flow. And finally, we need a circuit load, some form of resistor, a light bulb, it could be a um, a motor, a loudspeaker, a heating element. Basically, the real key important thing is that the load here is going to be an energy converter. So it's going to change the electrical potential energy into you know, light, heat, motion, whatever it is that we require at that time. Now one other term that we will come across is potential difference. And really that's the energy that's lost as the charge moves around the circuit. So each, each unit of charge is carrying X amount of energy. The energy that gets consumed as it travels around the circuit is, uh, is, is often referred to as the potential difference. So again, it's energy that's being used per coulomb. So the SI units are the same. So really we're, we're pretty much talking about much the same thing when we use the word term EMF or potential difference or voltage. You know, what, what's really happening is that you've got a power supply that's going to provide an increase in potential difference, whilst as the charges move around, the circuit elements, the loads, are going to use up the potential difference. So we give energy to the electrons, the electrons move around, they give the energy off and it's transformed into some other form. Really important I might throw in now is that the electrons never get used up in the electric circuit. Okay, it's only the energy that they're carrying that gets consumed. Alright, that's it now for uh, just the rundown on voltage and current. So um, that'll do until we get into series and parallel circuits.